Well, here's what I've been doing for quite a few hours, or days as I should say. Um, I have done all sorts of cutting. It's, everything's ready to get painted and bolted on. So now looking under here, this is what's required to do the Super Duty axle swap with the Battleborn Brakes kit. You need to notch out your cross member, plate it, weld it, and then weld that piece in, and now it's ready for paint. Pretty good welds. You can see how there's real good penetration on that weld on top of the frame rail. You see that bottom line there. A little bit of paint makes me the welder that I'm not. I taught myself how to weld on my other truck. We're using flux core, but I'd say that looks pretty good. I'm real happy with that. Well, I would call that progress. I had to jack up the truck. I had to put the jack over by the driver's door, put it by the passenger door, so I could lift it up enough to remove those jack stands. And then, because they were in the way of the radius arms, so we got it jacked up. We moved the jack stands to the front of the truck. The axle is just sitting underneath the truck. It still needs to get centered, but I'm just trying to drink in the beauty of this thing. I mean, just look at it. Now, here's my Cosmo Mud Kicker. Yeah, these are my new tires for the truck. It should look something like this when we're done. I don't know if I need to jack the truck up more yet, but we will find out soon. These are 13 and a half uh, wide, 37 tall. So let's just take a little walk around here. We've got the Super Duty axle just setting under it right now. I'm going to put under or put on the coil springs, let uh, most most of the weight uh, sit on the axle after I get the radius arms mounted or bolted in there, because that'll at least get me lined up closer. But yeah, I'll get the coil springs on it so most of the weight can be sitting on it so we can get that, um, what is it, the drag link? I don't know. Whatever that bre or arm is called, um, where it is going to be, we've got this bracket loosely bolted in place. And then that bracket down there is just going to sit right between those two bolts. And we'll put a couple tack welds on it and remove this bracket, remove that bolt and burn it in. Still got to do the rear axle. That one's extremely easy. Here's where I'm at right now. So I wanted to show this step because there's a lot of people that might find this interesting. Maybe you guys can learn something from watching me. I have jacked the front differential up from, what is that? The drag link or something like that. And then we've already started that bolt right there. That bolt started. So we did that when it was on the ground. We have the axle close enough to where it goes. And now I just needed to get the axle, this hole to line up here. So I went ahead and I used a ratchet strap to pull the pull from right there. And I pulled straight back to over here. This is a good tie down point right there. So by pulling it straight back, it got it right where I needed it to go. And then after I get that bolt in and get the nuts started, I'll lower the, differ the differential down and I'm going to put in the coil springs and let the weight get set down on it. Here's what I've gotten done since the last clip. We got the coil springs in. I've got the axle centered. I went ahead and tack welded the track bar mount in place. So now I just need to remove that bolt and I'll remove those four bolts and start welding it in. So what I did, uh, this track bar goes all the way over there. I wrapped a ratchet strap around the bottom of it and I have the ratchet right there. And I went ahead and went all the way up over here so I could kind of pull it up into place and at least get it close enough to where it's not just flopping all over the place. And then I got it where I wanted it with my hand and did a few tack welds as you guys can see. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that ratchet strap, remove that uh, nut and bolt, and I'll go ahead and weld it in. So I'll have it over on the welding table here in a second. Well, here's the bracket that 
I just took off the frame. So here's what we're working with. Um, you may notice how it doesn't look like it's perfectly straight. That's okay. Um, each truck is unique. This is where my axle lined up perfectly. So this needs to be, or this needs to have really good welds because if these welds fail, your axle, I mean, essentially is just going to move all around and go out of control or something like that. So for the first 500 miles or so, I'll be looking it over real good, making sure none of the welds have cracked. Um, and I'll maybe drive it through some rough terrain just to really test them out because this is going to be under a lot of tension and torsion and force. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can see how I've just tacked them in place. We are using a Lincoln Easy Mig 180. I've got the setting on E, which is all the way up. I've got the wire speed on three. And this is a flux core welder. Um, it's been perfect for me for everything that I've had to do. It, it, I welded my motor mounts for this motor with it and that's holding. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna grab my grounding clamp right here and we're just gonna ground it. And I think what I'm gonna do I'll probably do like a two or three inch beads and then do another two or three inch bead up here and then maybe come down here to a two or three inch bead because we don't want the metal to warp. It could warp, but I don't think it will. Um, but yeah, we'll just do a, you know, we'll do all the way on the outside, do the inside, make sure the edges are good and just all the way around. So let's do some welding. I have this, uh, you can't see, but there's this large door of the shed open and I have doors over there open, so the smoke and stuff should be able to escape pretty easy. So let's start welding. Now, let's go over to this side. Let's see how it looks. That's a good looking well. Doing good so far. So now, I'll go ahead and go down this way on this one, and then I'll come back over to this side and do that. Another real good looking weld. Now let's go ahead and turn it on its side like so. And I'll weld it this side. Go ahead and wipe that down. getting real good penetration. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and run this one all the way down. Again, I taught myself how to weld. I did not take any welding classes. Yeah, let's brush that down. Good looking welds. Let's go ahead and flip it over and do that other side.
and brush this down. Go ahead and go up here. And I'm going to go over these ones again. I have a little gap right here to fill because the bracket, this one is a strong 90 and this is a, this one kind of curves, so it leaves a little gap. So I'm going to fill that little gap there. Well, let's take a look at my welds. This is what a flex core welder can do. I think they're all pretty good. Now look down here. That is a solid looking weld. Oh, I see I can hit that little spot right there I forgot. So I'll hit that here in a second. Now let's look over here. A little ugly, but that's okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and touch that one spot up. Do you guys think the welds will hold? This is a heavy truck. There's probably gonna be, I mean, half the truck's weight at least should be on the front axle, right on this torsion point because that's what this bar does. It keeps it from going left to right. That's literally like the only thing that'll keep the axle centered on the truck. Now, if the axle is not perfectly centered as it is with how I welded this, I can get an adjustable um, arm so I can adjust it in and out wherever it needs to go. So that's fine. They make those for the Super Duty axles, so that's all I'd need there. Well, now that we've given that nowhere near enough time to cool down, Let's go ahead and throw some paint on it. There we go. All right, got that bolted on. 
four bolts there, two on the bottom side, and that big bolt. So, how I tighten that one down to make it much easier, I just simply used my impact and held it with this big crescent wrench and got it nice and tight. Now, this little bolt hole right there, that'll be for the power steering gearbox, so that'll be the next thing I put in. But for now, that's my progress. Um, I will need to order up some new shocks for this truck. I will get the, probably the cheapest or second cheapest Rock Auto has to offer.